going on, Viola Nation? It's your boy, TVK, and today we're on our way to Houston. Now, see, I just spent a week in the Hamptons teaching at a festival called International Music Sessions, and let me tell you, it's amazing. It's run by my friends Teresa Kim and Gia Kim, and it is about bringing kids from all over the world to work with kids who live in the Hamptons and, and teaching social love, love between different groups at a very young age. And uh, at the same time, we're, they're learning music. So I was teaching camera music, I was teaching improv, and I was teaching violin. So that was very fun. And now we're on our way to Houston to do, you guessed it, teach more kids. By the way, I'm also performing there. And last time I performed this particular piece, I absolutely botched it. So let's not do that again, shall we? Just got through uh, security and <laughs> it's so funny. So <laughs> I got through security. You know that part where you like throw your hands in the air and you spread your legs or whatever. So uh, got through that and the guy at the very end of the machine was like, "I'm gonna have to grope you, bro." <laughs> I'm like, "No." So it was funny because he like looked really not happy about it at, at the same time. So it was kind of it was kind of funny and he just got <sighs> all up in there, man. This whole thing with like TSA security is so interesting to me because studies show that it really doesn't prevent anything. It's just really what people like to call security theater. So uh, it was just interesting to see his reaction as well as mine. I didn't want to be groped. He didn't want to grope me. So uh, you know, nobody's happy. <laughs> now performing is something that that I have struggled with my entire life. Little do you know, like, when I was an undergrad, I had so many concerts and so many recitals and so many studio recitals where I would be prepared, I would get ready, go on stage, and I would perform and have massive, major memory slips. And it got so bad that I thought I would end up just quitting and, and not being a musician and just changing my major. But you know, I've learned that the more you do it, the more you perform, the more you take a piece that you've worked on and perform it for more people, the better it'll be. See, what I've learned over the years is that, at least for me, my first performance of a piece is always the worst. Always the worst. My sweet spot is when I get to maybe four or five, when I've performed it in front of other people. So, instead of going into the recital, that being the first time I've ever played it in front of other people, I've learned to play in front of other people go and like say hey I'll buy you a beer when I was 21 <laughs> uh, I'll buy you a beer if you just like come and listen to me um, just for like 20 minutes so that's super helpful and so if you're struggling with performance you just got to do it more you just got to do it more and that's why I'm excited to play this elegy one more time because when I performed it at IMS there was a moment right when the recapitulation came that the pianist and I got off and I think I just skipped like two or three measures. Never happened before. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be good to come back to it. Another thing I think that's really helpful is if you try to pay attention to your tendencies. Personally, I get really, really tight in my abdominal and my back area. Uh, I just tense up and the things that you should be talking to yourself is the opposite. So if you get really tense, you need to think loose, 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 relax, relax. Even if your heartbeat is going 150 beats per minute. <laughs> so just remember at the end of the day, performance is an ever evolving practice and you just need to keep getting back up after every single failure. Just keep moving forward because the only time you actually fail is when you give up. And that's something that I'm glad that I learned. Okay, it's been about seven hours since I last talked to you. Just been on flight after flight, had a couple delays, and I had to check my bag, so. We're on our way to go get our bags though, and I hope nothing's broken. So I did a quick check of all of my equipment. 
everything's okay. But still, that was crazy. So I hope on the way return, on the return trip back to New York, I don't have to check this bag. I'll have to figure out how. I'm gonna make sure everything, my laptops, hard drives, lenses are with me. They go on the plane with me. Anyway, now we're just waiting for uh, Daniel to show up and then uh, yeah, we'll get going. Finally picked up by Daniel. We're on our way to, what are we doing, Daniel? Well, we're gonna put the groceries away. Okay. And we're gonna put your luggage away. Okay. And then we're gonna wait for the pianist. And then we're gonna, and then we're gonna rehearse, right? We're gonna rehearse? Oh, we're playing Bohemian Rhapsody, right? Viola Quartet, is it Viola Quartet or? Ooh, stay tuned, ah. Uh. Hey guys, so that's pretty much it for the day, but before I go, I have a fireside chat, but this is a super special fireside chat. A couple of weeks ago, I met none other than Black Violin. I like met them in New York, they came and showed up, and we had, we had a talk up on a rooftop, and I actually got to interview Kev from Black Violin. So let's check out that, let's do that special fireside chat and then we'll call it a day. Check it out. So guys, this is a very special moment for me because I'm here with Kev from Back Black Violin. And here's the deal. I've been watching Black Violin since I was 13 years old in seventh grade. And now I'm here in Manhattan chilling with him. And I just got it. We had a wonderful talk and I just want to ask him that question and give you guys some value straight from his mouth. If you could go back in time, Kev, what would you say to your younger self? Taking into, into account all the trials and tribulations that you've gone through with Black Violin, what's that one thing that could have put you over the edge a little faster? Hmm. Well, first of all, it's an honor, man. Oh, I'm a, I'm stop, a huge man. fan. I'm a violist by trade. This is my yeah. favorite violist <laughs> on the planet right now. Oh my so, God. yes, you know, just know lot. that, number one. Okay. Um, I would say trust yourself, be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the people that resonate the most in this world, musicians, athletes, public figures, are the people that are being genuine. You know, being who you are, and especially on stage and on camera mm -hmm. and you know on socials and things of that nature, mm -hmm. it it allows it allows people to see kind of who you are and and it's it's easier as a performer to be yourself and be free about it. Yes. So for yes. me, I would tell my older self to, you know, um, be yourself, trust yourself, because people respond to authenticity. They do. You know, I mean, any way you look at it, the reason why 
I think that you're, you know, are so amazing. Not just because you do dope stuff and all that type of stuff, but you are who you are. Yeah. And people respond to that. Mm -hmm. Me, when I'm on stage, like I don't care if you yeah. don't like the notes I'm playing. I yeah. don't care if that yeah. double stop wasn't yeah. in tune. Yeah. I don't care. I'm just being myself and I'm having okay. a great time and loving what I'm doing. And my fans was they 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 give me that back and they appreciate that. So I would just tell my younger self and anyone that's listening mm -hmm. is just to be yourself, trust yourself, because ultimately, you know, people are gonna love you for who you are. They're not gonna love you if you're trying to be that viola kid. You're trying to yeah. be that violin. Yeah. They want to see who you are as yourself, and they will respond to that. And it, it's a it's kind of a loaded thing because it's kind of it's harder than it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know you have to really like kind of be. You have to let go of your vulnerability to be yourself. Like you have to just not care not about care. what people think about mm -hmm. what you're playing or what mm -hmm. vibe or, or what you're wearing or what you look like or what the lighting looks like or whatever. So pretty much you gotta play homie, play. Play homie, play. <laughs> yes. Play homie, play and don't care what no other homie thinks about what you're doing. You have to be yourself. You know, I don't know, even on the political note, you can think about, you know, people, you know, have all kinds of different views of, you know, politics and who our president is or whatever. Yeah. Yo, but that dude is completely who he is. That's true. Authentic and he says it and it's mm -hmm. always been like that. So you can mm -hmm. say what you want, but he's giving you who he is. You give who you are, I give who I am. That's why people respond. Always trust yourself and be yourself. And it will always work out the way it's supposed to. Ladies and gentlemen, Kev from Black Violin. This is yeah. truly an honor and a privilege. Thank you, Kev. Appreciate Thank you, brother. You, man. Yes, sir. Woo! Life made. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for my day today, guys. Like we have another rehearsal coming up and then Chloe Trevor's showing up later. So I'm super excited you'll be able to see her tomorrow, but I'm gonna call it because I have to go ahead and get this footage ProRes converted and I got to start editing tonight. So thank you so much for watching and coming along with me on my day today. It's been fun having you, even though it was pretty much all airline travel. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you had a great day and don't forget, play on me.